Come on. All right, yes, but let's move on quickly. Uh, tough times, they say, required adoption of novel, novel measures to survive. In this regard, managers have been urged to evaluate the leadership capabilities, organization structure, and systems they have that they are planning to adopt to stay ahead in the face of global disruption. The Director of Current Affairs at TVC Communications, Babajide Koladi Otitojo, stressed this while delivering a lecture on strategic leadership as a program organized by the Chartered Institute of Management and Leadership held at the Federal University of Agriculture at Belkuta, in Ogo State. Let's share the story of TVC News. Kazim Olowe with you. For an organization or government to succeed, those at the helm of affairs must be ready to adopt strategic leadership approach and ensure other stakeholders key into the vision and work towards actualizing the shared goal. This was part of the suggestions of the Director of Current Affairs, TVC Communications by Bajidi Koladi Utitoju, at the program of the Chartered Institute of Management and Leadership held at the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta. While delivering a lecture on the theme of the program titled Navigating the Future, Strategic Leadership in the Era of Disruption, Babajide Otitoju said leaders must be curious, decisive, listen, communicate, diplomatic and have foresight. He also wants leaders to develop the mindset and organizational culture that will turn the forces of destruction into catalysts for strategic thinking and creative execution. Evaluate the type of leadership, capabilities and organizational structure or systems you need to develop to get ahead and hopefully stay ahead in the face of global disruption. The challenge for you as a leader is to develop the mindset and organizational culture that will turn the forces of disruption into a catalyst for strategic thinking and creative execution. The national president of the institute who was represented at the event also emphasized the need for adoption of strategic leadership in management of companies, institutions, governance, among others. We look at leadership from the position of academics, from the position of political and from the cultural value aspects, including even the religious aspects. Because the combination of all this is what can give us what we call a total holistic national development in appreciation of their positive roles in the development of their communities and institutions, the Ebumawi of Agoiwi Abdul Razak Adenuba and the Aragwiji of Iragwiji Abdul Rashid Olabomi, represented by Kola Adebayo, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development FUNAB, were honored with fellowship awards and inducted as members of the Board of Regents of the Institute. The Vice Chancellor of the Freer University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, Olushola Kende, who was represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor academics Olukayode Akinyemi was also honored for his exemplary leadership style and commitment to national development. Kazimolowe, TVC News, Abe Okuta. Thank you. You were one of the keynote speakers at that event. Uh, beyond what the report could cover, what were your major takeaways from that event when it comes to strategic leadership phenomenon? Actually, um, I was a sole speaker, okay. lecturer, at the event, and um, when I look at what's going on in our world, some of the changes that have happened in my profession, I came to the conclusion that, look, we live in a very disruptive environment, and um, destruction is not um, the kind of disruption that we are talking about is not in the negative sense. Some of those disruptions are necessary for our world to get better. For example, the internet is the greatest invention since light. It has made our world better. It has created job opportunities for so many people. If I imagine those who, uh, like Jume and the rest of them now, without the internet, they will not exist. With your phone, your smartphone, you are able to do deals. You are able to buy whatever you want. It will be brought to you thanks to the internet. And the fact that we have internet-enabled phones. Journalism was not practiced in this way 
some years back. Print journalism has been so badly affected by the advent of the internet. But we cannot say because of that, that that disruption is negative. What newspapers have done, the big newspapers in our country, Punch and the rest of them, is to simply foresee the future and take steps to survive in that disruptive environment. They, they simply went digital, and they are doing very well. In fact, I, some of those newspapers are outperforming TV stations in terms of their digital penetration. Yeah. If they are simply relaxed and say, ah, um, the internet has come to kill us, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Because today, the print runs of newspapers have gone down drastically. That was a time in this country that some newspapers were doing as much as 400, 500,000 per day. One million, from the time. One million. You know, but look at us today. If a newspaper does 10,000 per day, they will be very happy. It is that bad. But they found a way around it. That's why I'm saying strategic leaders must always be able to foresee the future and come up with plans that will enable the organization to navigate that future. Once your strategic plan is good enough and implemented seamlessly, you will then be the master of the future, the master of that disruptive environment. So we must be inventive. We must be constantly thinking. Leaders must constantly think. You know, I was telling people that today's children, for example, the way we were raised is not the way they've been raised. Some of the things that you say to me, for example, that I can take on the chain, if you probably say it to my son, he will not, in fact, he, he may even stop having anything to do with you. Because today's children are so self-entitled that they don't even want to be corrected. They don't want to be corrected. They get angry. <laughs> So, and where as a leader you have a lot of Gen Z's, a lot of young people, you also must bear in mind the fact that the way they want to be talked to is different. So you have to, yes, you have to be patient with them. You have to flow with them. You know, you can still get the best out of them. Not by shouting at them, yeah, calling them cool. idiots mm -hmm. and all that. No, no, no. <laughs> you call them idiots, they will, they will, maybe the next day they won't even come to work. <laughs> they are gone. Uh, so mm -hmm. a leader must constantly think, uh -huh. look at his environment and see how he can make the most of the opportunities available and rally people towards that common goal of making the organization a much better place than a method. All right, Dotson. You've heard it, BK, but from your own point of view, how do leaders cope in the face of this global disruption? You have said it all. You must know your environment. You must know those who work for you. Like, you live in the same house. If you don't understand how to bring the best out of them, then you are going to lose them. Some people wonder why some companies are able to retain staff for so long. Yes. Whereas in some others, they just keep going. Mm. But, you know, it's just in and out. So that's the, that's the, that's the difference. The difference is in how the leader manages the team. Right. 